Let's say you're a fresh new face to the world of marketing, and specifically the world of beer. What are some tactics that you would employ to sell your products? Maybe showing how much fun you would have drinking the product in a social setting? Or how about just how refreshing and wonderful the product is? However, instead you decide to do something bold and different. You turn your beer commercials into horror movies. But that's just plain nuts! Many of you out there are thinking, right? And between 1996 and 1998, Anheuser-Busch Beer did just that. In order to sell their new product, Bud Ice, they created the Bud Ice Penguin. Doobie, doobie, do. Hello. How's your bad ice? Doobie, doobie. It's the third one tonight. Hello. This is the police. Those calls are coming from inside the house. Doobie, doobie, doobie. And I know what you're thinking. The last thing you would want to associate your product with is horror, right? Well, believe it or not, these commercials were really, really good. So today we're gonna take a look back at an almost forgotten anomaly in television today. It's brief meteoric rise and swift end as we ask ourselves, what was with those slasher movie Bud Ice Penguin commercials? Doobie, doobie, doobie. The story of the Bud Ice Penguins begins back in 1993. During this time frame, there was like an ice beer craze that was going on in North America. So like any other major trends that other companies will jump onto, Anheuser-Busch decided, you know what? We want to get on in the action as well too and make our own ice beer. Their first ice beer known as Ice Draft was released in late 1993 with great enthusiasm from the company. Vice President of Anheuser-Busch, August Bush IV stated, I like it, that's cool, we gotta do that. However, despite the fact that Ice Draft was getting a really big initiative push, it was met with uh, less than stellar results. They really weren't selling a lot of the product, and it's actually reported that Anheuser-Busch spent $2 million on a 30-second spot featuring actor Bruce Payne, which unfortunately, at the time of this recording, isn't available online to watch. Um, from what I was reading, the video itself was considered to be like really weird and abstract, and it was only shown to like a small handful of test audiences in the Midwest, and I guess it didn't test very well because they basically shelved it and all that money spent on the advertisement was just fucking thrown away. Which I think is a travesty because everything that I've read on this particular ad, it sounds it sounds amazing and I would have loved to have seen it. So here's hoping that it gets put on the internet someday. And what good are you? And that's the unfortunate thing because for now though, it is basically considered lost media. In its place, Anheuser-Busch released a more streamlined commercial, which you're seeing on the screen now. Crack open a smoother, better draft. Ice draft from Budweiser. From now on, a cold draft just isn't cool enough. This footage was provided by the YouTube channel, The Beta Max King, after I reached out to them. Do you go check their channel out? Cause I do have them linked below. And it's it's actually really cool because they post a lot of stuff from like VHSs, like recorded VHSs. So if you want a really good trip through like the eighties and nineties, they post a lot of different content on there. I highly recommend them. And I genuinely appreciate them letting me use the footage. So definitely go check them out. Still, following the release of the more streamlined commercial, Ice Draft still wasn't the mega success Anheuser-Busch had initially hoped for. So they actually decided to do a complete overhaul and rebrand the product from scratch. Gone was the name Ice Draft and was replaced by the name Bud Ice with a new bottle redesign to go along with it. And then this is when things started to pick up. Enter Goodby Silverstein and Partners. These were the same minds that were behind the freaking insanely popular got milk phenomenon in the early 90s. Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry, maybe next time. <laughs> Got milk. Together with Anheuser-Busch, they would create a mascot that they hoped would be the ticket to Bud Ice's success. And during the 1996 Super Bowl, the very first Bud Ice penguin would be unleashed onto the populace. Drink Bud Ice. After watching it, I still can't believe this thing got made and was so successful. And that's coming for me, and I, I love horror stuff, but the fact that they were able to make this, it, it's especially from a marketing company, like on a marketing standpoint, this doesn't seem like on paper like it should work, but it 
It really did. Combining elements of horror, slasher films, urban legends, and it honestly, it even had a bit of a creepy pasta vibe long before the famous internet storytelling genre would be born. And even to this day, not only as a commercial does it stand up very well, but even as a short horror film. And you want to know what's even crazier than that? All my gushing I've done so far, I was being serious. This commercial was extremely successful for Anheuser-Busch. Following the Super Bowl commercial's release, Anheuser-Busch reported the sales for Bud Ice in increased by 21%, with merchandise of the Bud Ice Penguin being extremely popular as well. The character was so popular that for the two years he was around, he would become a mainstay in the NHL, showing up in various promotional material at hockey arenas all around. Growing up, I went to quite a few oh, that's right, I was gonna wear my fucking, um my beaver t-shirt. I'd go to a lot of hockey games growing up. I'm sure you guys have seen me wear my Cleveland Lumberjacks t-shirt, defunct team now, but uh, I do distinctly remember going to like different NHL games and different hockey games in general and seeing the Bud Ice Penguin banners all over the place. And it was the place that I would get the most exposure of the character. And to me, it's so nostalgic like watching these commercials now because it does remind me of going to the hockey games and smelling the beer and being around the ice. And it's just, it brings back a lot of good memories, despite the fact that the character itself is on all accounts supposed to be terrifying. So synonymous would this character be within professional hockey that one of the last commercials made featuring the Bud Ice Penguin would be him stealing the Stanley Cup. Today is a black day in the history of the NHL. The Stanley Cup has been stolen. Police have no clues except for a sound heard by one of the night watchmen. Dooby, dooby, doo. Drink Bud Ice, but uh, beware of the penguins. Which, it's kind of hilarious because just one year prior, Neon Genesis Evangelion would premiere in Japan, which also features a beer drinking penguin. So humanity just couldn't get enough of beer drinking penguins, I guess, at the time. Boo! You stink! In total, there were six Bud Ice Penguins commercials produced and shown to the public between 1996 and 1998. Now, by design, the character was pretty simple, but what made it interesting was the character's personality. Like I said before, many of these commercials clearly took inspiration from slasher movies. The quick cuts, the Dutch angles, and a sense of dreading when it came to atmosphere. And aside from the Penguin's rampant desire for Bud Ice, we only knew one other thing about his personality. His love of old blue eyes. Frank Sinatra. The Bud Ice Penguin's infamous catchphrase, Doobie Doobie Doo, came from the last 30 seconds of Frank Sinatra's Strangers in the Night. I seriously would love to know at what point during the creative process did the idea of Frank Sinatra's Doobie Doobie Doo become a focal point to the character development of this, like, just, severely deranged beer drinking penguin. The, ma the mad men who created this character were able to turn this sweet loving phrase at the end of Strangers in the Night into a truly terrifying catchphrase. And they made it work. And my God, Doobie Doobie Doo being a slasher's catchphrase is just freaking genius. Doobie Doobie Doo. What makes it more satisfying is when you listen to the lyrics of Strangers of the Night, you can almost visualize that this is the exact song playing in the penguin's head while he stalks his prey, creating this kind of beautiful contrast to the horrific events playing out in the ad. Am I overanalyzing? Probably, but I do think it's fascinating that even if by accident, they added so much layer and depth to this beer drinking penguin. Now, not every one of these Bud Ice commercials were horror movies. One was a pseudo adventure ad, which reminded me of one part Congo at the beginning and other parts King Kong at the end of the ad. To be fair, in some circles, King Kong is considered a horror movie and Congo also starred Bruce Campbell, Ernie Hudson, and Tim Curry. So I'm gonna allow it. Ah! Ah! A cheap gorilla suit! Ah! It looks so bad! The other commercials consisted of a man trying to flee from the penguin via train only to be caught in the end, a couple at home receiving calls by the Bud Ice Penguin, only to find out the calls are coming from inside the home, which out of all these ads is the one that I remember the most. And finally, a video of a group of people opening a locked fridge after a news broadcast states the Bud Ice Penguin was captured, only to then find out he was inside the speaker the whole time. What I think I really enjoyed and appreciate about these commercials today is the fact that they didn't rely on cheap horror gimmicks that 
even today's horror movies still use from time to time, that create decent, albeit funny, scares while still selling their product. Only it took place in the 90s. However, all good things must come to an end. Now, you might be thinking Anheuser-Busch got pressured by Congress for having a mascot that appeals to kids or something like that, right? Which you'd be forgiven if you thought that. Considering that Joe Camel, the mascot of Camel Cigarettes, would be banned on July 12th, 1997, this wasn't an attempt to stop companies from marketing to minors in an indirect way. No, it was in fact because a golf company believed that their brand was being tarnished. Seriously. Popular men's clothing, Munzingwear, has a line of golfing shirts entitled Penguin, in which they have a penguin as their logo. And that's it. Jim Carrey better watch out or Mr. Popper's Penguins is gonna be the next thing to go. Munzingwear clothing demanded Anheuser-Busch discontinue utilizing the Bud Ice Penguin. They feared that their customers would confuse their brand of golf t-shirts named Penguin with the beer drinking, hockey loving Bud Ice Penguin. Which two things. One, it's a generic penguin. And I think that there's enough difference between the penguin on the Munzingwear t-shirts and the Bud Ice Penguin that I think people would be able to tell the difference. And two, I can't help but laugh at the fact that a semi-golf mascot felt threatened by a semi-hockey mascot. Like that's just, that's too coincidental to be a thing. However, Anheuser-Busch would give in to their demands and following the Stanley Cup commercial, the Bud Ice Penguin would basically be put on ice, never to be seen again. I keep looking online in hopes that someday I'm gonna come across some footage of like the Bud Ice Penguin, of like a lost Bud Ice Penguin commercial or like a scrapped one or something along those lines. But unfortunately, I don't think anything like that exists. And as for Ann Howard Bush, following the exit of the Bud Ice Penguin, they continued to make Bud Ice just without their lovable, alcoholic, psychotic, Sinatra loving penguin. And last I checked, Bud Ice is still widely available at all hockey arenas. So that was the Bud Ice Penguin. As of now, there is absolutely absolutely no chance of a revival for the Bud Ice Penguin, but I'm not gonna give up hope that someday we might get that. With a little bit of retooling, I think they could relaunch the iconic Penguin. Would it be successful on a second go around? Maybe. If the Geico Gecko can be on the air for over 20 years, I don't see why the Bud Ice Penguin couldn't make a return. Make sure to keep things light and rebellious, and I'll see y'all next time.